The inner kingdom, the truth is one and eternal. Realize one's oneness within your deathless self, within. The following commentary is based on the teachings of Paramahansa Yogananda. Most people imagine that the inner kingdom, as Jesus described it, lacks the fascination they attributed to sense life, the bright lights, the diverse attractions, the joys and the laughter. Little do they realize what a vast universe exists in their one's self. There are many passages of the Old and New Testaments of the Bible that describe aspects of this inner kingdom. In the book of Genesis we read, And the Lord God planted a garden eastward of Eden, and the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. This garden was in no earthly place. It exists even now in the very self of every human being. The legend of Adam and Eve is allegorical. It describes how the first human beings dissipated their spiritual energy centered in the spine. The spine is the channel through which flows the river of baptism and spiritual life. The Bhagavad Gita tells us the wise speak at of an eternal Ashv Ashvata tree with the roots above and its branches below. The tree of life spoken of also in the Genesis is the spine. Its roots are above in the brain energy. Its branches are the downward. The consciousness is downward in, into delusion. One, on the other hand, when the energy is drawn upward, in deep meditation, the consciousness is drawn, drawn toward its eternal source, God, and is at last, at last united to Him, Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita. Therefore, urges His chief disciple, Arjuna, to embrace, embrace the yoga silence, the path of meditation. The yogi, he says, is greater than the ascetic, greater than even than the followers of the path of wisdom, jnana yoga, or of action, karma yoga. Be thou, O Arjuna, a yogi. For those who would find the divine truth, Krishna gives this description of the yogi. Steadfast a lamp burns, sheltered from the wind, steadfastly, meditating solitary. Such is the likeness of the yogi's mind, shut from sand storms and burning bright to heaven. Thus, through holy sculpture, scriptures, God has spoken to mankind. This interior rain is interior, but when you perceive the joy that is inside of you, you perceive the joy in every circumstance of your life. One, one day, one, uh, uh, we just said goodbye to very dear friends, Bhaktan and Mantrini, with their daughter. They transferred. They decided to go and live in the United States. We were sad. To, they are very good friends. We have been with them for many years. They brought so much uh, kindness to this place for so many years. And even the little one has. So we were there like when when you're with your friends, we were all together. And at one point we started singing and we all started singing. The, the community was there. We, it was really the family. And at beginning we were in a group, in a small group, and then we started uh, putting ourselves in a circle, and it was really natural, like it happens in a, in a group of children. We were singing and d dancing, and we started, we started singing that we are all together, brothers in God, and the energy of everyone was so, so high. And there was no sadness anymore. Why should we be sad? There was no sense of separation. 
there was no idea of I would like it to be different. Just like this, like what the lecture was saying, we are always in unified in God. And really the energy changed. It was light, there was joy, there was a sense of unity between us and in God. This is the inner rain. And, and it manifests in the in earth sometimes. But for a yogi that is always centered in that light, calm light, he always lives this, this state, interior state. So I wanted to start today with this chant, because this chant that we sang at the beginning explains really what, what the inner life is. This is a joyful song that Swami wrote. It's, it's, uh, there is joy in the heavens and the melody is everywhere. If you talk about nature, there is a melody, there is a joy, an incredible joy, an expression of colors like to now in, in, in spring. The, the, the sound of, of oh, so many insects, of birds, so much, such a, a life that is proclaiming life in God. And in this song, come in the light and, and, and dance and just be yourself. That's what the chant says. Swami says the desires are the chains. There is joy all over us. This paradise does not depend of our external circumstances. It's a choice. It's our choice. The divine wants to to give us abundance and joy, peace, love. But we have to open to this abundance. It's just a thought. It's an act of, of, of will. If you observe, uh, butterflies. If you observe butterflies, you will see the lightness. They absorb that all the sweet nectar, and that's what what God wants. That we are light, and that we absorb from God this nectar of love, because it is not. A question of external circumstances. Oh, you are reading. If you have decided to be in a, in a prison, then you will not perceive the joy, the beauty, and love that is given to you. If we are heavy and we we do not feel all these gifts that God wants to give us with abundance in this moment, it's an art. It's a divine design because if you see it, there's this design, this p p picture that when you see it on one, in one sense, you see a beautiful woman, and in another one, you see um, uh, a witch. It's like an optic game. Um, if you, it's like in the spiritual life. If you, if you are trained, you will see joy. You will see love immediately. If you do something, you, you do a yoga position, you chant something, and then, wow, it just changes. 
in an instant. Pa the internal paradise, the internal rain, is a heart full of smiles. It's something that is really magnetic. Whoever has it would like love to have it even more. Yogananda, he used to say that he would go somewhere and he would in, on a, he would move on a train and he would eat in a in a restaurant on the train and he would always sit in the same place and there was always this waiter that would always serve with him with to, with joy and one day he came and all those those the places where this waiter would serve were all busy were all taken so he was a a a, a, a man that saw him and he starts crying. The waiter starts crying and Yogananda comes up and says, hey, what's wrong? What do you what do you have that he, say, he comes to Yogananda and he says, I, what do you have that I don't have? And Yogananda says, I have God. I can give this to you so you can feel it in your heart. This is the real secret. The exterior things help us what really helps us is the beauty, the good. It helps us see this secret reality of God. And we have to learn to contact this in the external world as well. So we can contact Him in whatever circumstance. The people that have this in their heart are magnetic. They are wise, they are kind, they are always open to help everyone. They always know the right thing to say, the right thing to do. It's beautiful to be like that. We have had, we have had a man that was here for many years. A lot of you know, knew him, Swami Kriyananda. Uh, he is all still very present between us. But in his, in his lectures, you know, we remember phrases he would say, and I would continue laughing every time I hear them, like if it was the first time. We would always hear him say the same, the same phrase, uh, the same joke, and we would also all so happy to hear it once again, because he would really share with us so, so much, so much wisdom. There's another story of Yogananda when he was in America and he's in a hall he decided to 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 sing oh god beautiful and very long they were and for a long time and there were people that were cured and there was a consciousness transformation and he sung and sung and sung for a long time and there was in that evening a place where he where he could receive people that, that evening and there was this a man that was very angry and he puts his gun on the table and says, what did you, what did you do to me? I'm going to kill you for what you have done to me. I'm never going to be as I was before. And I can imagine Yogananda's smile when he had able to conquer another soul to take him to God. And he said, yes, that's true. You're never going to be the same because you thought that killing or f hurting other people, you would have had money and you would have been happy, but that's not what, what gives you happiness. And he says, I want all that grace that you have, all that bliss. And Yogananda says, dear son of God, you have to see the good in everyone. Help people, serve people, and you will see that whenever, when you will be in the, in the moment of death, everything will come to you. This is the transformation, the wonderful transformation that masters do and miracles do to, to each one of us. Because when someone is materialistic and egoic, it's transformed into a lightness, and true, into kindness, into love. This is a miracle. Jesus used to say, two things. One, a man worked in, 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 his, in his land and the, the, the tractor 
stopped. And he said, well, what is it? Is it a stone or a root or something? So he stopped his tractor. And he goes out and, and he realizes that it's a, a treasure, an incredible thing. I had never imagined to see something like that. And he, he had no words. And so he was so happy. He goes home and he sells everything that he had to, to buy that land and to have that treasure. And that's the treasure of the inner joy. No one, no one can take it away from you. It's yours. But you have to do the best you can to conquer this treasure. And this is how you, what happens when you try and you taste a little bit of the love of God that, com that moves you inside and that put, takes you to decide to, to do whatever I can, whatever I can, I can take away this, um, I'm not going to do this anymore, or, or take care of this business, so I can meditate a little bit more, so I can have more time to God. And then you realize that this treasure starts becoming brighter and brighter, and you, are, you feel you are, you are happy and you're in peace. And you feel more, more aware of what's happening in, around you. And you dedicate yourself every day more to this, to this search. And then there's another story. We, we need to receive this, the help to be able to do this. When we are evolving ourselves, we... we you know, the defect of things, beautiful things that happen do not last so much, so it's difficult, you know, the path is difficult. And that's like the waiter that was saying, what do you have that I don't have? How can I have this, this bliss forever? How, even if I'm in a, in a bad situation, how can I stay still? That's when we need our instruments, meditation, yoga, all the techniques. So there is this other par parable of Jesus that used to say, who has a hundred sheep and one gets lost, you just do not go and look for it. You just stay. He will stay to take care of the other ones. And there's another one, pastor, that will go and look for that lost. And when he finds that lost sheep, he will embrace it. And he just thinks, he thinks, I have to go and look for whatever sheep, lost sheep I have. And that's how God is with us. Because there are moments in our incarnations that we are a lost sheep. Or like the prodigal uh, son that had lost everything. Had lost the liberty, had, had done things that he had thrown away all the treasure of peace and uh, generosity his father had given him. But we are never alone because God is there. Our father is there. He's always observing us. And every time that he feels there is an opening in our heart, he just goes in and helps us understand and take us up like those butterflies with lightness for our Father, there is, no, there is no impossible situation. There is no desperate situation. Because He knows that He can save whoever, everyone. Because it's like your, your parent that sees the little baby or little boy that is dreaming. And He just wakes them up. He, the, uh, God just knows that we can wake up from this dream and that we will be happy and that everything will be forgotten and we can fly as these light butterflies free. This is more or less the idea. There is a song of Swami Kriyananda that helps to perceive this inner rain. Home is a green hill. Says, home is a green hill and what he means with a house is our heart it's our inner rain it is 
it is the wind. Our houses are wind. When you are have peace inside, you are in a va beautiful valley, and you are home. You are not fearful of anything. You feel protected. If you're in a difficult situation, if there is rain, there is a wind, you feel secure. There were women that that found themselves. Then I will continue with the translation. But there was these women that were in a high mountain, and at one point, the lightning arrived. And you know, when 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 rain and lightning comes in the mountain, it's very very dangerous. And they didn't know how to. to what to do and they they knew that there was uh they had the fear of of of, res of dying from cold or from the lightning you know the cold air is is terrible if you are wet so in both cases it was not not easy but they were both good meditators and they started chanting om uh, om is the vibration of of the joy of God and in that vibration you're always secure and happy and you're well you're protected and they started singing and all the fear went away and then they realize you know if you realize it's a dream of God so you can do you can do whatever you want you know if they were they were relaxed and they were just happy to see all this beauty around them. I, in fact, I would like to be a day once in a in a in a tower of 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 crystal tower in the middle of a storm with all the lightning. This is something I would like. They had they felt that they had felt they had, there was this protection, uh, crystal protection. So the house is a. I'm translating the 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 song. The house is the wind. House is the knowing that the sky is 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 close by. House is a heart, a calm heart. House is where I am. Home, home. Nothing can. Home is. Not a house. Home is an into a beautiful heart. This this song is a message that Swami wanted us to have. And we're going to hear it now. And we can use this moment as a meditation because the vibration that he trans he gives us through the melody is the inner rain that is possible, that is for you in this moment. And I want to read another thought of Yogananda. One day, while I was meditating, I heard the voice of God that was whispering, You think that I'm away, far away from you. You have not gone into your in inner temple. This is why you think I'm, a I'm far away. I'm always here, always present. You will just, please come in and I will be here, ready to receive you. So this is something we all should, should know. Because God is there, I am also here. Come, come in your inner temple with a concentrated and calm mind. Like Krishna used to say, with this flame that does not move, that is still. So, let's hear this, this, this song and practice this.